Um, we're ready for the next session now. Um, thank you very much to David Peacock and also to Andrew Isherwood and Jonathan for that session on ILL. We're now really delighted to be joined by Helen Bingham and Emily uh, Johnson from uh, Hem uh, Helen from HEE, Health Education England, and Emily from uh, Birmingham uh, NHS Trust. And we're going to be doing a little bit of a panel Q&A session with them over the next half an hour. I'm joined by Janet oh. <laughs> uh, at the podium. And uh, I'm going to start by talking to Helen about the, the wider HEE project um, to merge systems across NHS England. Uh, and then Janet will talk to Emily uh, about the work being done specifically in the Midlands. So Helen, I'm hoping you can hear us and that uh, you're ready I can, to. I can, yeah, I can certainly hear you. Can everyone, I hope everyone can hear me. Oh, I'm getting some nods, great, thank you. Great, okay, so um, Health Education England, uh, as we understand it, have been working with health libraries across England to implement unified systems, including the e-resources discovery and library management systems. Where did the project start and what are its aims and its vision? OK, well, it started with our realisation based on an audit of library systems in the NHS in England that not only did we have over 90 separate library management system instances, but also rapidly and exponentially being layered on top of that was uh, lots and lots and lots of local discovery services implementations and uh, so what what was already a very uh, fragmented infrastructure was being was being layered on with even more separate systems and the result of this was that our users so the NHS staff and trainees and, and students who use library services and we want to access these resources were having a very variable inconsistent experience as they as they move from organisation to organisation, which many people in the NHS do, whether that, that's on placement or with their, their work and their careers, they move around. Uh, so we needed to get a grip of that growing fragmentation. And uh, so we had a vision, easy to say, there being one place to search for, for NHS staff, trainees and students to search for trusted information. So that's trusted NHS funded and NHS created knowledge and evidence resources and high quality open source resources. And we wanted it be, to be one place to search regardless of whether they were searching for education or research or management decision making or indeed patient care and whether they were looking for for online resources or print resources, or they didn't know when they started searching. So that was that was the um, that was that's the vision. So that's how, how far have you got with the uh, with the project? Well, we have just launched the new national discovery service, uh, which uses EDS from EBSCO, which I imagine many of you have, have heard of or may even and have. And we are currently re procuring an up updating shared regional library management systems where well, we already had those. So I said we had over 90, um, but um, we did, some of those were already regionally shared systems, but we needed to sort of re-procure, up, upgrade those with a view to implement, integrating them, sorry, with the national discovery layer. Um, so we're, we're doing that. We've done some regional, uh, procurement, but also in parallel, we're starting to encourage library services, NHS library services in regions which didn't have shared library management systems, no culture at all of doing that. Um, so all a bit, a bit alien really, to come on board with, with shared collaboratives. And we're really pleased that the progress that's been made with um, a couple of the existing cohort collaboratives in the Midlands, and uh, which Emily's going to talk about, and also the in London, where other, uh, more library services have wanted to come on board. So we're sort of growing, we've re-procured some centrally and we're growing others from the bottom up. We've got seven regions in total across the NHS in England. So a way, a way to go, but we feel we're making good progress. 
Great. And what have been the main challenges uh, and what would you say are the main challenges still facing you in implementing single or unified systems in an organisation like the NHS? Well, and you, as you know, probably all colleagues do, you know, it's the sheer size, complexity and diversity of the NHS in England, which, of course, we say the NHS in England, but it's not one organisation. You know, it's, it comprises hundreds of separate employer organisations and um, you know, depending on who's counting what, between 1.4 and 1.7 million staff in total. And it's just one of those situations where there is no one size fits fits all, very evidently. I mean, even the library services, there's 184, I think, latest count, NHS funded library services. All their staff are employed by separate organisations. There were none of them are employees of Health Education England. They're all employees of, of local trusts and, and accountable to those local trusts. So quite a challenge getting cooperation. I think library, librarians themselves are always very, very good at cooperating, but some of the infrastructure around them, these separate organisational boundaries don't make that easy. IT is challenging. I think we don't use necessarily use the most up-to-date browsers um, and technology. Um, and GDPR, I know it's, it's probably, you know, it's really important and it's challenging for everyone, but I think particularly in the NHS with all the sensitivity around patient data. So it, it uh, hopefully. That... Quite a few challenges. Quite a few challenges. I mean, with, with all those challenges though, Helen, there must be some, some benefits that you see to come out of this. So what, what would you say are the main benefits that you're looking for out of this? Well, world? you won't be surprised to hear me saying that really ultimately it's about improving patient care. And that's what we're all in the business of doing in the NHS. We want it to contribute to improving patient care by making it much quicker and easier for, for staff and, and trainees to be able to access the knowledge and evidence resources they need to do their jobs. Uh, so improve patient care, improve value for money. So all the aforementioned uh, separate systems um, or needing to be separately uh, maintained at the moment. We want to duplicate that spend through reducing the number of systems we want to maintain. And we want to make sure the resources that we buy in the NHS are better used because they're more easily discoverable and they can be more easily shared. So they're not hidden in separate catalogues in local library services um, and sitting on shelves, but actually then they work harder for us. Great. I mean, and, we're, and sorry, and, and sorry, and I suppose the other thing is with time releasing savings for some of the library library staff. That's what we want to achieve through this, really, because all those systems require maintenance, and library, local library teams in the NHS are typically very small, um, and they've got a lot else to do. So we want to to see some real time releasing benefits in terms of back office work so that uh, people can do more of the value-added customer-facing work that we want to see our, our library teams doing. Great. Uh, I mean, as I know, because <laughs> I've been heavily involved in this process, um, COA is now uh, going to be the, the major library management system in four of the, the seven regions. Um, as you mentioned, um, uh, East of England, Kent, sorry, Sussex as, as a replacement uh, system for the, their current uh, systems. And then uh, as a growing collaborative uh, system in the Midlands and in London. Um, what, why, why do you think COA has been the system of choice uh, in those four regions? Well, that's a, good, that's, a good, that's a good question. I mean, I think one of the things is because it's open source software. And as others are probably aware, that ticks, you know, that's a big tick in, in terms of government digital services um, and, and for invest and, and recommendations guidelines for investment in IT. So that's definitely a big, a big tick. And I think what we found is that, and this probably, you know, it means more than anything really, is that the library staff who are using Koha like it and they tell others that they do. Um, um, and they like it because it, I suppose, because it's, it's flexible and intuitive, and oh, and reporting, I think, is something that um, 
people tell me, I have to say that it's a long, long time since I've worked in a proper library myself, but tell me that that's really good. Um, I see the outputs. Um, but, you know, that's really excellent with Koha. So they like that. And I think, um, uh, I think, uh, yeah, I, you know, I think you've done pretty well in the procurement tender exercises, which I know are pain, <laughs> painful processes to go through. Everyone's probably been through those as well. But oh, we love um, them. Huh, you know, all the paperwork we make you do. Uh, but it, uh, yeah, I, I think what comes across is understanding of the NHS and flex and our complexities and our challenges and willingness to work with us to solve those, to find solutions that work for us. Uh, I think that's one of the things that um, has helped uh, Koha and PTFS be successful in. Great. Just before we hand over to Janet to have a chat with Emily, Helen, um, how, how would you like to sum up the, the vision of uh, the role of health libraries in the NHS, what they and, and their systems bring to the NHS, and, and how will the system enable that, that vision? Well, I suppose as much as anything, it's about if we've got systems that are intuitive to use and as streamlined and as low maintenance as possible, then we help release some of the library library time that's currently tied up in, in those systems. I mean, they're a really scarce commodity in the NHS library knowledge um, services. They've got great skills and expertise. And our vision really is that knowledge and evidence is being not only being accessed, but it's being used within the NHS. So we want the library staff to be playing a key role in mobilising knowledge and evidence, not just, I say just, we know this bit isn't easy either, but not just managing it and signposting to it, but actually getting it used in practice. And to effectively do that value added role, we need, as I say, the back office systems to be as streamlined, intuitive, low maintenance as possible. So it's really, you know, it's really, it's really critical. On a sort of, on, you know, it's not, not sexy in a way, um, but it's, um, you know, it it's enables, I think, library staff in the NHS to fulfil their, their potential. Fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us, Helen. Okay. Um, I'm going to pass over to Janet, who's going to, hopefully we've got Emily with us. I can see Emily, yes. <laughs> if you want to just say hello, Emily. Hi, Emily, are you with us? Any sign of Emily? It's hunting for the mute button. <laughs> yes. <laughs> or unmute. It looks like just her mic's not working. She has. She looks like she's talking, but nobody's hearing her. Oh. <laughs> can you hear me now? Does that? We can. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> great, great to hear you. I'm going to hand over, as I say, to Janet, who's going to have a chat with Emily. Hi Emily. Oh, there you are. Brilliant. <laughs> Lovely to see you. <laughs> Excellent. Hi. So uh, really glad for you to join us today. Um, so we're going to, you and me are going to have a chat about the um, library management system merger for the Midlands. Um, and this is quite interesting for, for, for me as well, because back in 2012, I was the original project manager for the what's currently the base consortia. I know that you as a Koha user, um, you've been using Koha as part of working for base. So this role, you're now the project manager for um, this merger project. So it's a new one for you. Um, how, how are you settling in? Uh, yeah, so um, I'm two months in now, and I think it's going well so far, um, because it's like a merger of libraries, and um, there's a lot of work in sort of aligning policies and procedures and terms and conditions and the rules on COA, um, so most of the big decisions have been made, it's just ironing out the finer details and um, before the data starts to be moved uh, for the first phase of the project, um, but it's handy that I've worked with COA before it means I've got like an understanding of what's possible within the system and its functionality. So. That's, that's great. 
Yeah, I mean, we're, we're really looking forward to um, bringing the, this Midlands merger libraries project um, together into one system. Um, and so could you outline um, the plan of which libraries are coming on board when they're, we're planning to get them on board and give us an idea of the timescales over the next uh, uh, 12 months or so? Sure, yeah. Um, so we're going to take a phased approach to the project um, because there's so many trusts involved. Um, there's currently 26 trusts involved and some of them are at different stages and using different systems. So some currently use COA and some don't. Um, so the first phase is phase 1A and that's BASE, um, which is most the um, NHS libraries in Birmingham and the Black Country um, and Coventry and Warwickshire. And uh, we aim to complete that by March 2022. So um, it's quite soon really um and then um see so these two libraries had kind of planned to merge before the involvement of he so uh, that's why sort of they're first um because they want to move sort of the quickest um and then next we're going to do the rest of the coa libraries um within the midlands region um so that's phase 1b and it includes uh, worcester and hereford kettering and northampton and they're set to merge in around july 2022 and then the next phase is um, non coa libraries, and that's Mid Cheshire, Nottinghamshire, and Shropshire. And they all use different LMSs. So there's more work involved with moving the data um, and the migration phase. Um, so the aim is to have that done by August 2022. Um, and then we've had some new libraries come along more recently um, and join the project a little bit later. So they're going to be phase three, and that's um, Nottingham University. Um, which is also non-COA. Um, so yeah, that's why they're joining a bit later. And then Midlands Partnership hope to join in a phase four, maybe a year later, it depends on sort of contracts and things like that. Wow, that's great. There's a lot going on and we'll be with you every step of the way for sure. Um, and I mean, you say there's quite a lot of work to do and it's quite soon that initial March date, but I know that in the background for some time now, um, you've been, there's been a lot of preparatory work going on with the different libraries and the different trusts. So not just the initial phase one, but some of the other libraries too. Um, could you tell us some more about the working groups that have been set up um, and, and sort of what some of the challenges challenges they've been facing, what they've been discussing and so on? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so because most of the libraries involved are merging, you know, from different services and they use different LMSs, we set up some working groups to sort of set out a core terms and conditions and rules for the LMS. And um, so we've got four main working groups. We've got a circulation group, a cataloguing group, an OPAC group and a reports group. Um, and we've comprised those of experts in those different fields from the different services. Um, and they meet probably once a month um, to go through sort of um, what needs to be agreed. Um, and then um, they discuss and then the, the recommendations from those working groups go to the project board um, to get agreement um, and ratification on decisions there. Um, I'd say the circulation group is perhaps the most challenging of all. Um, because they have to agree on sort of the main rules and, and make compromises. And so, for example, um, number of loans was quite a tricky one for us because some libraries are quite small and only want to give out six loans, whereas others would want to give out a lot, like they have 20 that they, they give out. So it's been quite hard to find compromise because obviously we want sort of a single system that um, uses the same rules across the board. So that's sort of been the biggest challenge of the project, sort of getting the compromise, but we're sort of getting there now. We've, we've got an agreed set of rules, so yeah, wow. we can kind of move forward, so it's great. That's really good. It sounds like, well, there've been some really interesting discussions around um, ways to share policies, which policies to adopt. I've joined you and some of um, quite a few of the working groups and some of my colleagues have as well um, to give some of our input as well. Um, so um, have you have you found the libraries generally happy to, for the collaboration and um, how, how has that been going well? Um, on the whole, yes. Um, so we're aiming to look for sort of best practice and whatever sort of will be the most beneficial for the end user. Um, however, as I said before, it can be difficult to reach a point of consensus yeah. and I think sometimes libraries can be slightly reluctant to change and want to sort of keep the rules that they've had before yeah. um uh, but you know we are sort of coming around to creating a shared set of yeah. agreed decisions and um 
like for example length of loan you can go around in circles but we're starting to get there now people are coming on to the idea of change and sort of the benefits for the end user which is sort of the most important thing yeah brilliant that's really good um so um we look forward to working with you, carrying through with the project. Um, we're hoping for a, a configuration workshop, sort of January we're looking towards, I think now. Uh, and th that's when we're gonna sort of pull together the initial phase one and sort of start matching the policies together. And, uh, and uh, it's great news, really good to, to be working on the project with you. Yeah, 